Hey, welcome back to Geek Toolkit. I know it's been a while. I moved. I'll talk about it in another video. For this one, we're going to focus on this laser right here. This is a Wayne Lux JL7. It's a 10 watt diode laser. We do another review, but we're also going to have some fun with this one. We're going to talk about uh, basically making puzzles. Uh, this is one of the projects I did with this one. I also made a clock. We'll talk a little bit about why clocks and puzzles are really good tests for this and where it did well and where it didn't. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the other materials here. I've got a purse. This purse here was made for my daughter. Uh, she wanted a bluey purse, so I put her name on the back of it. So that was a nice leather test for this. Uh, I tried to go through as many materials as I could on this thing, and also just to come up with some different projects. We'll also talk about metal. Metal's a really uh, popular one. People like to tell me about how uh, dial lasers they think can etch metal, and they can't. So we'll talk a little bit about why that is a good test and why it's special. And also we'll talk about performance, this piece right here. This was a half inch. We'll talk a bit about this. Uh, there was something I realized when, I, when people do testing on these lasers that they don't say on video that I'm gonna, I'll talk about. But I wanna get into first, what is this laser? What makes it special? What's different? Then I'll talk about the assembly of this laser, how it went putting it together. I'll talk a little bit about the instructions. There were some interesting things in there. Then we'll talk about the performance. I've got some really cool things here. Uh, we'll talk about these like performance grids and I'll tell you about how it did as far as a 10 watt laser and the depth of focus. And then finally, we'll talk about these projects and just basically just go through this. I tell you, you know, every laser I've tested had something different about it. There was some feature or something that it did. And I'm not just talking about like end stops, but there was something about the behavior of the laser. And what it made me realize is that these reviews are really important because they're, each laser has its own like almost personality or something it's really, really good at. And this laser is no different. Uh, there's also things that other lasers have that this one doesn't. And we'll talk about that as well at the end. First thing I wanna talk about is the features of this laser. What makes this laser unique from the other, <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm on like five or six reviews I've done and the dozens of reviews out there. Well, Wayne Lux has made a couple of interesting decisions with their laser. One of them is they have what I call a dual firmware support. And what that means is this laser has firmware that it comes with that has features that are not in a Gerbil or an open source firmware. One of them, for instance, is this has Bluetooth built in and you can actually connect to this laser with your phone and without a PC at all, you can control this laser and actually take images off your phone. You can take them off the internet, download them to your phone. You can take photos, whatever you want, and you can actually etch them into the laser. Now, that's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about like getting some kind of external uh, third-party software or learning that. It basically becomes like a phone app controlling the laser. And I was able to take a very simple picture off the internet very quickly. Uh, I'm showing you here on this camera just to show you, you know, the quality, quite good. The engraving was uh, nice. It was a very easy to use program and it, it worked. The thing for me personally is a lot of the tools I use such as Lightburn or the things that generate puzzles or boxes and such are on a PC. And so that's where I personally would like to see this used. Now here's the cool thing. The firmware that this has, they support a tool to flash it over to Gerbil and back. So you can, you can basically go back and forth between the two. It's an interesting thing. I haven't seen any other lasers do that. The benefit of that is if you want to use open source tools or stuff you're familiar with or very powerful tools, you can, but if you want to use their software and go back to, um, you know, or being able to use it from a phone and stuff, you can do that as well. Now there's one downside of this and I'll mention it again at the end, but the main thing is at the time that I'm filming this, you're not able to do any of the rotary stuff. Now rotary is an add-on that you can do to actually etch things like around things like, like uh, water bottles, stuff like that. You can't do the rotary in Lightburn or anything in the Gerbil software. So that is a basically a very important downside to understand. That dual firmware thing and the ability to use the phone and Bluetooth though, very unique, works very well. But what I want to talk about is for the rest of this video, I'll talk about the Gerbil side of this. I'm going to do a lot of stuff in Lightburn. I'll talk about that as well. The other thing I want to mention is this is a 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter laser. It's just over 15 inches quite a lot of cutting room, uh, very large. A lot of lasers I've looked at have been about that, that area, but it's good to see that this thing is staying in that spec. It is a larger laser. Now, Wayne Lux as a company has been making lasers for a while. They do a lot of what are called uh, Galva lasers. They do stuff like that. 
and those lasers typically have a smaller area, so it's cool to see this size of a laser. Another thing about this is it does support an SD card. You can use the phone to do that. It does not have an LCD panel, however. It also does not have an air assist. So those are two things that this does not come with, did not have. It didn't come with a rotary, though I believe, like I said, there is a rotary attachment you can get for it. Um, but those are just some things that it was lacking in the way it came for me. I do like the LCD panels for doing things with offline. In the case of this laser, what you would do if you want to do offline uh, cutting is you'd plug in the SD card, you'd keep their firmware on there, and you would use your phone to control it. I want to talk about assembly. Now, there's not much here. There's three screws on each of these four corners, and then there's a couple screws here for your Z on either side. You've got one, two here, and one, two here. Those screws, once that's together, the entire laser is assembled. There's nothing else really to it. The laser part here is adjustable with this. So not only is the assembly that simple, but basically that just locks in. And then when you've got your height, when you're dialing it in, of course I can't do this on camera. Huh. There we go. So this here, you unscrew it and this comes out. You can put it back in and you can tighten it up. So it's very easy to not only assemble, but that's also how you focus the lasers with this here. The other thing about this laser, it's important compared to other lasers, uh, the belts are actually built into these sides and you don't have to assemble them yourself. They also have a very easily uh, adjustment on here for adjusting the belt tightness. That's important because after you use the laser for a while, you're gonna to want to adjust it. It's nice to have to not, to not have to disassemble the entire belt. You simply adjust it here and the laser is all dialed in. The one other thing I want to talk about for assembly and just kind of the first run of this laser is the instruction book is very, very well done. The thing about the instructions on this is it actually goes through not only the assembly of the laser, but it goes through how to use the firmware flashing back and forth. And then it even takes it further and says how to set it up in light burn and laser gerbil and software like that. I thought that was really cool to have them go all those extra steps to explain how to set up that software. That just makes it much easier to use for beginners. And one of the things I'm always talking about on these videos is like, who are these lasers for? Is this an advanced laser or a beginner laser? This laser is interesting. With the 10 watts of power, the two five watt uh, uh, diodes on here, it has limit switches, which I've talked about in the past, but if you don't know, a limit switch means that when this moves over, you hear that click, that is a switch that tells the laser it's moved all the way over on the x-axis and it has another one here on the y so when it comes down here you hear that click there now the laser knows where zero zero is that's called the limit switch that is great for both repeatability for advanced users and for beginners to make sure that the laser you don't have to worry about it going off the rails and grinding or damaging itself it will always stay and know where it's at um, it's also one of the things I'll talk about when I get to puzzles, I'll talk about why that repeatability is so important. I want to talk about performance next. Now performance wise, we're going to talk about it with the pure numbers of what it does for cuts. And then we're going to talk about how it did on these projects here. And I'll start going through all of these projects. This right here is basically a grid for cut cutting speeds. Here's another one here. This is an eighth inch grid and this is a quarter inch grid. Now the thing about these grids here is on this one here, on one pass for an eighth inch, you can see I went up to 327 millimeters per minute and was able to cut all the way through on a single pass with eight inch. That means, now eighth inch is very common to do a lot of projects in, and that means I can do them very, very quickly and reliably know I'm gonna make it all the way through. That is very important. Now quarter inch, sometimes a laser won't even make it through a quarter inch or it'll have to do a bunch of passes, but at 100 millimeters per minute, this thing went through a quarter inch reliably. Now, the intro video that I started with, this Geek Toolkit, this is also a quarter inch and it went through at 150 millimeters. Now I wanna talk about, let, let me talk about half inch and I'll tell you about why this Geek Toolkit one's so important. This is a half inch. It cut through on one pass in two directions. I'm sorry, in two lines. The horizontal lines, it went through in one pass on a, on a quarter inch. The vertical lines took four passes, okay? Now, that was very, now this is basswood. This is one of the softer woods recommended for lasers, but that is very, very important. And I'm gonna tell you something about this uh, discovery that you'll, you'll 
you'll once you know this, you'll you'll every other laser review you ever look at, you'll notice something about what they say in their material and the reviews that they don't mention. Lasers, uh, I'm sorry, diode lasers have a non-square, uh, basically focal point. And what that means is they're typically performed differently horizontally versus vertically. So the two directions matter. This one horizontally went all the way through a half inch in one pass. But when it went vertical, it was not as powerful. Now, the reason I say this is you'll see demos on videos on, on other channels where they'll show a laser go through a half inch in one pass and they'll be like, it cuts through, you know, whatever it is, 12 millimeters or whatever in one pass. That's not true. And it's useless info. That's only true if you're going to use it like a freaking circular saw. The actual reliability of going through a piece of wood or, or a piece of material matters on a curve or on both directions. Um, again, unless you're using like circular saw. That's why this Geek Toolkit was such an important test. This is quarter inch in one pass, but you can see it went through all sorts of different uh, directions and so on to get through. You know, the letters are all different uh, uh, directions. The K is a different direction. The G is a curve and it went through on one pass. Very, very important to know that. Um, now, I'm gonna lead that, I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna lead into puzzles, and why I love puzzles now. Puzzles have a whole bunch of different directions, and the thing I learned about making puzzles on a laser is if you don't go through in one pass, it gets messed up really, really badly. I'll show you an example here. This is a puzzle where I took a piece of wood, I, I glued a piece of paper onto it, and then I cut it. And the thing about this piece here, and I'll, I'll make sure it goes on, on this laser here, is you can actually see that when the piece fell, the laser kept going, and it cut another puzzle piece out of that, that puzzle that was basically on the floor of the laser. That basically ruins the puzzle. You end up with a second puzzle engraved into it. You have to be able to cut a puzzle in one pass, or you have to use what's called like a needle board or something related. So that count takes me to this puzzle here. Now, a little background on this puzzle, I'm a huge Commodore 64 fan, and Karanis Rift and Legacy of the Ancients were two of my favorite games. And when I realized I could make a puzzle as a, as a demo project, I wanted to come up with something unique. Now, the thing is, if you take the Karanis Rift box art that you find on the internet and you scale it up to make a puzzle out of it, it looks horrible. You really want a very sharp image for a puzzle. So I actually ran this through some AI. Uh, I ran it through Gigapixel from Topaz Labs made a nicer image out of it, and then was able to take that and print it out. Now, I printed it, th this is my Legacy of the Ancients, one of my test prints here, I printed it out in color, and then what I would do is, I would cut that out as a puzzle. I would basically uh, glue this to a piece of wood, overlay a puzzle at the same size, and tell the laser to go through. The laser, I needed to cut in one pass, I needed to be able to cut all of the curves, I needed to cut accurately and not char the paper. And what you can see here is I have this beautiful Karanis Rift puzzle, which I'm so giddy about, right? Like I would never be able to go buy this. I, I you know, th this isn't something where FX is gonna come back out and say, yes, let's go make an MX2 based version of Karanis Rift, but eighth inch wood and it cut through beautifully. Now I'll do a separate uh, video on, on how, the details of how I did this, the software and all, but it's a very, very powerful, I think, demo of showing the reliability of being able to go through eighth inch wood or even quarter inch. I did make a quarter inch puzzle and it did go through on one pass. This, these are little pieces. I learned a lot about this, right? These are way too little. And also there's a reason that puzzles are not a quarter inch thick. Um, this was incredibly hard to, to put together. The other thing I tried to do here is I tried to do a wood engraving and then do a puzzle, uh, which removes, all, of course, all the color. It makes it, you know, almost grayscale. And I realize there's a bit of an art to making puzzles. You really need the right image. So that failed. I'll talk again about, about that more later. But I was able to make a puzzle with this, and that was one of my projects I did I was really excited about for this video. And this laser did wonderfully for it. I look forward to making many more puzzles, and I'll share those later. Now, besides puzzles, I did do leather. So let's talk about leather. Uh, leather, this thing goes very, very fast, and it has a very, very tight beam. Leather is a great test for seeing how small the, uh, basically the engraving can be and how accurate. And I'm gonna hold this up to this overhead camera here. Uh, we did some fun geeky logos and then of course the Geek Toolkit. 
uh, is a filled in letters, which is a different than like the Serenity where it's a line drawn. But you can see that this came out very nice and clear, uh, even on this leather, and it came out nice and dark. Now moving over to here, my uh, daughter wanted a bluey purse. So I went out and got an inexpensive purse. Now this was harder, right? Because this is curved. So you're trying to focus on here. You're trying to like basically hit this, but when you put it under the laser here, it's a bit curved. So I, I basically had something under it, tried to flatten it out. And I got a pretty good cut out of it, or a, a pretty good engraving, I should say. And then on the other side, I did her name. Now this one was a little bit harder because you're removing material across here and Let's see, so what you see there is, it came out really good. The, the, the A through the, well, the A through the A basically came out clean, but the J uh, I had a little bit of problem with. That was where I was still dialing in the, 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 the depth, and it went a bit deeper, and then I had to stop it and back off. That being said, if I had a, uh, if I was gonna make a bunch of these, or if I was doing a project, I would probably make, like, get a sacrificial purse or cut on some area where I could test engrave, that wouldn't be visible. This came out great. I'm really, really excited about this project. Uh, my daughter loves this purse, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, and now she has a bluey purse that's like an adult purse, so that's cool. The final project I wanna talk about is this acrylic clock. Uh, now this right here, this is a good test for acrylics. Now we've done leather, we've done wood. Uh, actually, I'll talk about metal after this as well, but for the acrylic, the nice thing is you get a really good test of how does it perform with uh, this is basically the heat of it hitting the acrylic. And now it's a very difficult thing to dial in. I thought I had it and all of this, this came out exactly as I wanted, except for the N. Let's see, I'm gonna move this here. The N is a little bit uh, basically heated. It, it basically melted a little bit on the N. So I'll show the back of it, which is where, where you can really see it. So that was more of a dialing in thing. As far as like cutting acrylic, this is a fairly intricate piece. This is a clock that's gonna go in my bedroom. I have a, a black and, and red, uh, black, white, and red bedroom, and I wanted something to match that, that theme. And this came out really well. Now, if you wanna know how to build these acrylic clocks, how I, I put this together, I have a video I'll link to on how to do these. But I like to show like, you know, not just this stuff, right, of how fast it cuts, but basically the projects you can do with these lasers. And this one was, has been fun. Ah, oh, metal. So, the other thing about these lasers, is they come with these pens. And I used to always ask, why do they come with a marker? Well, they come with a marker because that's how you mark metal. Now, again, diode lasers cannot engrave metal. The, 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 the word engrave implies that it's actually cutting or removing metal material. So when I say can't engrave, it means you can't remove the material. That being said, you can mark it, okay? So what I've done here is I took the marker and you basically, you scribble all over the metal, I'll, I'll just do that real quick just to show you here. And you don't have to, it doesn't have to be fully black it or anything. Or it just has to be dark enough to see. So that's, you know, that's what that looks like there. And then you come across with the laser and you laser whatever you want into this. And then when you're done with that, you just, the, the, you know, there's a little eraser here. You just erase it. And whatever you hit with the laser will be permanently there. So you can see... This was for my cat whiskers, which is funny because it's a dog bone. And then when I try to remove that, it's there. It's permanently on there. So you can mark metal with this. There's other uh, uh, chemicals and stuff that you can put on metal to mark it as well. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is some notes of what I learned about this laser. If you have one of these and you wanna use it. One of the things is make sure if you're cutting, you lift your material up. On the back of this here, you can see the charring. This is what it looks like if the material is on the, uh, basically on your metal plate. If you lift it up a bit and you cut through, you'll get a much, much cleaner uh, look. So on the back here, you can see where it's clean here. And then here, you can see this one's actually dark. You get this like almost like smoke that ends up into the wood or something, something that stains it. So basically lifting it off here, you can get a nice clean cut. So that's one of the tips. This is probably with any diode laser, but I learned this uh, really well with this one here. Another thing with 10 watt lasers is a lot of the laser speeds that you've seen out there, especially this one, are uh, not very relevant. You're gonna to wanna to come up with your own speeds and that's where these come in really handy. The other thing is keep in mind that different woods, you only wanna do this for each wood. This one right here is a uh, basswood, but for the same speeds and so on, for this wood, uh, for let's say plywood, which has glues in it, 
it's gonna be totally different. So, you know, these are really popular uh, to generate and I'll talk about that in a video. I'll talk about basically how I benchmark these and how I generate those in a video here soon. Okay, so what did I think about this laser as a conclusion? Well, I'll talk about the good points. This laser worked right out of the box. There was no problems. I had no weird issues with this laser and I actually had a pre-production unit. There was some assembly quirks about it, but I was able to get through those. And I verified with the manufacturer that those were all documented properly. I basically had the final documentation, but not quite the final hardware. So even with that, I was able to put this thing together and get it up and running very, very quickly. The uh, Everything about it worked, their software, their Bluetooth thing worked the first time for me. So I basically was really impressed with just the reliability of this laser. The other thing was the consistency of going through things. When I was cutting through wood, I got very confident on my settings and I was very reliably going through things, which was really, really nice. The other thing was the power. This was the first time I saw anything cut a half inch piece of wood. Now the reason this is important is there's a lot of lasers that say they're 10 watts. There's just a ton of them out there. I've turned down like five or six reviews on them. They, they didn't offer anything different. But the reason it's important to look at like YouTube reviews of these lasers is things like the focal length matter so much more than anything else. And the way this thing is focused, to have that long focus means it can cut through this thick of wood. I didn't have to like lower it and recut or do a bunch of passes and stuff. Like it was able to get through this full thing in the four passes reliably. And that's, that's a half inch piece of wood. Um, that's just amazing. That's, that's absolutely amazing to have that kind of reliability. And that's what inspired me to try the puzzles and to be able to cut through the puzzles in one pass without burning the paper the way this did was really, really nice. Now it's not all roses. Of course, there's going to be some things this laser doesn't have or things I wish it had and so on. The number one thing is it does not have an air assist. Now this is the JL7. They do have a, a laser with an air assist. I, I will see if I can get a hold of that one. I'm very excited to try an air assist with a 10 watt laser. I think that's a killer combo. It's really ironic to be able to uh, go through such thick wood, but without an air assist, you're gonna get this charring. So you look at this piece here, see it's all black, right? I believe with an air assist, I'll get a better, cleaner cut. I also think I can go even faster than I was going here because it would actually be blowing the ash away. I wouldn't have to recut. So for these uh, things where I have to go through multiple passes to go deeper, I think an air assist would be amazing. This just doesn't have it. And the thing about these lasers is I don't know if you can add it without like cutting through the metal and hacking it. And that's, that's not ideal. The other two things about this is it doesn't have an LCD. Now there is an LCD port. I'll have to ask the manufacturer if that's like an available add-on or something if they sell it. I've seen some of these that have an LCD port and the LCD wasn't available, so I'll have to check. But just not coming with an LCD, if you uh, really want to do a lot of stuff off an SD card, LCDs are really, really nice. The other thing is, the at, again, at the time of filming, I, I'll, and I'll edit the, the description when they update this, the firmware cannot do Gerbil plus uh, the, the rotary. You cannot do the rotary with the Gerbil firmware. You have to use their proprietary firmware, which limits you to their software, uh, which in my opinion is just not going to be as powerful as a full uh, software suite like Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. So that, you know, that to me is a, a ding, but they, if they support this, if they update the firmware, if they get that in there, I'll put that in the comments below. And I think that would be really cool. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with Wayne Lux. They've been very responsive to my emails. They've been very responsive to my support. Um, this thing, again, worked out of the box, which I can't say for every laser I've reviewed. So that is excellent. I'm really, really excited about the puzzle creation ability I have now. So I'll do that in a future video. But for now, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned some stuff, got inspired, saw some cool things you can build with these, these uh, lasers. Uh, maybe if you make a clock, let me know. I, I really enjoy being able to make my own clocks and there's so many designs and patterns. I'm, I'm looking forward to actually getting into making my own of those. And uh, my daughter loves her purse. So this has been a lot of fun projects, very geeky. And um, until next time, I'm Joe Farrell, Geek Toolkit. Thank you.